yes hashtag soft lifestyle but understand that unfortunately some things in life are, are hard, hard. <laughs> hard. if you don't prioritize rest in your life and have designated and protected times of rest hard work is always going to feel like a punishment to gain self-awareness people rely on the self mm. and that's a problem Ooh. you actually have to rely on others for self-awareness Hello and welcome to the Two My Sisters podcast. I'm Renee. And I'm Courtney and we are your online sisters and hosts of the Two My Sisters podcast. Now we are all about promoting the wellness, growth and development of a community of sisters across the world. And in today's conversation, we are going to be talking about the traps you need to avoid whilst you go on your glowing and growing journey. Yes, ladies, as we are leveling up this year, the year of vision, as Come we on. are making sure that we become the women we want to be. That's Right. There are some traps you need to avoid, okay? And not all of them are external, okay? <laughs> How about it? Not you being a trap. <laughs> you the trap. So today we are going to list for you some traps that you can avoid so that we can make this journey as smooth as possible, especially in the spirit of last week's episode mm -hmm. where we were talking about leveling up, possibly being a manifestation of pride, pride. and other horrible things. Yeah. But before we get into today's conversation, we have a dilemma. Mm. Hi. Let's go. Somebody is in need, and I'm not gonna lie. Today's one, very I'm good. Very excited. Very, very. I'm tres excited. Some a lot of gist in this. Oh dear. dear Renee and Courtney, hey. your podcast is amazing. You're helping so many of us. You're actually doing the Lord's work. Yes. Thank you. Girl. Let's go. Let's go. So I started talking this to this guy yeah. at a wedding. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to the wedding with my parents last weekend. He came with his parents as well. Okay. And we were all sat at the same table. He seemed nice. Mm -hmm. He asked for my name and took my number when our parents briefly left the table to greet other guests. We spoke and clicked immediately. We started texting as soon as we all left the wedding. Mm -hmm. I should preface what I'm about to say with the fact that I care about my potential partner's intellectual prowess. I want him to be <laughs> smart as well. <laughs> intellectual Girl. prowess. I want him to to be smart as well makes for good conversations mm -hmm. and chemistry etc mm -hmm. i hope i'm not coming across as snobbish mm -hmm. absolutely not mm -hmm. the issue is this in our text he uses your for both your and your <laughs> he uses your for both your and you are yeah and recently Ew. he just spelled tries as T-R-I-E-S. Oh. Oh, no. So I imagine he's not aware of <laughs> trees. <laughs> so I imagine he's not aware of the difference between there, there, and there. So I said, over there. Not the three there's. Their thing. Damn. And they are. <laughs> He doesn't, he's, she's assuming he doesn't know the difference. It may seem like a minor thing to most, but this kind of bugs me. Big ick. Yeah. What do you advise? Should I continue talking to him? Uh, should I correct him? Or should I fade it out and keep it moving? For a bit of context, he's older by three years okay. and just entered his late 20s. Okay. Thank you in advance for your response. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be thanking me, girl. <laughs> <I'm just> gonna, <laughs> let's preface with that. I don't know if you're going to be thanking me. You're going to be like... <laughs> um wow thank you for the dilemma sis and uh what an interesting one because i can very much imagine this being the kind of ick that gets big ick. this is like e tris <laughs> why was that tris how you guys feel tries is tris it's very difficult to comment on this because there may be a lot of contextual factors that you need to consider yes so, yes, he's in his late 20s, but is English his first language? Ooh, you come in with the facts. There we go. So, assuming that English is not his first language, mm. then I think that it would be a little bit, you're, you're being a bit hasty in terms of, like, judging and thinking that he doesn't have intellectual prowess because English is a really difficult language. Very. Just, whoa. Those words you just mentioned, your, 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 there, there, there. Why do we have three versions of the same word that you say the you same for different things different spelling different meaning and i think if english is not his first language then you can you can give him a pass and actually mm. that would be an opportunity for you to actually help him with his grammatical mm. errors and stuff like that you know romance romance he teach you Bonding. his language you teach him your language romance romance yeah um big big win so i think cut him some slack if it's not his first language if english is his first language <laughs> 
this one is tricky because mm. you don't want to come across snobbish and you need to understand that folks have had different upbringings, right? Yeah. There are some folks who are privileged enough to have had a formal education. Yeah. Um, and depending on like your life experience, depending on, you know, the things that you have had access to in terms of capital wise, you may not have been able to go to a fancy school or go mm. to university and your grammatical errors may be, you know, stopping you from a lot of things. Mm. I actually have a lot of friends who, when it comes to, you know, articulating themselves, both spoken mm. as well as written, mm. it can be quite challenging and it's actually a source of discomfort yeah. for them. So I would say tread carefully because it might actually be an insecurity of yes. his. Um, and it may be a thing where he's actually, he's trying, he's trizzing, um, but, you are out of order. <laughs> he's trizzing. Um, he's trying. Um, ah. um, you do have to. <laughs> you do. Ha you do have to cut him some slack and give him some grace. It may just be that's his like text speech. I'm not sure what the translation is between his like spoken articulation and his mm. written articulation. There are a lot of people I know who are fantastic speakers and cannot write for heck. Me. and vice versa there are folks who are fantastic writers i would say you're a great no girl I've no seen, you go, okay you. so confession i'm the one who uploads like the uh episodes every week yeah go and <laughs> read some of the descriptions <laughs> and the titles yeah you would think i have a good school don't kill me don't i have a degree like I'm, I'm smart but you're not gonna but be I said, um, okay that is sometimes i do i have to backpedal a bit yeah, I feel, I hear i'm it. not going I hear to it. lie to you yeah. but yeah go on with your point there are some folks who are fantastic at writing and not so great at speaking mm. i would say I'm, i've only actually become really really good at speaking towards the later part of my life i was always a phenomenal writer and i'll claim that so wow, you've been I think... amazing this girl has awards for public speaking it's multiple reigning champion <laughs> <laughs> public speaking about oh, i just yeah. became a great speaker just, recently recently no, those were um preludes <laughs> to the leveling up of the public speaking but i personally i just think that's icky i don't have any kind of um profound thing to say to you <laughs> around that ick. i just think it is icky you sound like somebody that is you know 60 years old and has only recently come into technology no and I you're that spelling would be incorrectly. harsh but i think i think overall give him the benefit of the doubt yeah. and try and because this is the you know you guys have not like created any kind of like intimacy or anything like that you don't know him that well mm. so there's so many contextual factors that mm. may contribute mm. to the way that he's communicating yes i think don't like stop speaking to him out of the blue because he's, you know, you don't want to become an Instagram infographic. <laughs> Stake it Not out as much as you can. Out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Try and get to know him a little bit better. Find out his educational background. Find out a bit more about his family context if you can. Yes. And then it will be easier for you to make a decision as to whether this is a big enough ick to deter you from continuing. Yeah. Because it may just be that, you know, you might want to create some intimacy such that mm. you're in a position to correct their grammar. Yeah. Like, for example, between like me and Courtney, she can always pull me up on stuff. I could yeah. always pull her up on stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for context, a lot of my other friends, when it comes to like their written communication, yes. I'll just be like, I will, you know, in yeah. iMessage where you can do exclamation mark. <laughs> I do exclamation mark. I'm, what is I'm flagging it. <laughs> what, are you, what are you actually trying to say here? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it may just be that you actually need to create that intimacy to be able to understand the context and then correct him if it's a big enough issue mm. um but yeah sis it's also okay to have icks yeah i 100%. think sometimes it can feel like especially as women yeah we're never really given the grace to like i don't not like, like it yeah, yeah i don't really like that about i don't like it when a guy does that whereas we've had multiple folks and multiple podcasts <gasps> come up the men, and, with the, oh, mics. the men with the mics the men with the mics anyways <laughs> they've already had their yeah they've had their own. yeah We've had multiple folks think that they can come up all the time, like over time mm. and talk about their preferences for women, even though they are like literally minute, minuscule stuff. Right. So it's okay to have some icks. 100%. It's about the way that you engage with those icks and it's about the way that you engage with those people in yeah. your life. Facts. Um, Facts. So yeah, that's what I was like. No, that's actually very spot on. I think, like you said, context actually matters. And as somebody who doesn't write as well as they speak, um, it is like a soft, a touch point because no one wants to be made to feel stupid. Do you get what I mean? And I think there are, if he is a nice guy and the only thing that is falling back is the grammar issue, I understand it is a big ick. I think there are ways around it though. Mm -hmm. I think you need to minimal texting yeah, with text. you gotta call that minimal text you just call, call him. him just call him and 
just in, I don't know, do a book a month or something. Yeah. Help him, help him to Not expand. No, nah, but you, but these are the things that help you, yeah, that's like true. to get um to become a stronger writer. Like read more, um, read more. He must <laughs> read no, no, more. Literally a, read more. Um, and like you said, create intimacy. If you really do like him and you want to pursue a relationship with him, create an intimate um enough relationship which allows you to be like you know it's trite like this is what it is do you get what I mean and even like off if he can get to the position where he can even ask you for help do you get what I mean or you offer your help and just be like babe I've noticed mm, um these issues and I just don't want you to to continue them and they're easy fixes so let me just help you these are very easy fixes we learned these things in primary right, school so these things are not hard to teach do you get what I mean um but there may be many like for example he may have dyslexia That's true. like that there, there could be so many things which um are stopping him from being able to write the way mm -hmm. he needs to or the way you would like him to and i think we need to have grace for those kinds of situations because not everyone learns the same mm. and not everyone has the same strength he may be great at mathematics oh, and 100. you're here talking about he doesn't have intellectual or this is a sign that he doesn't have intellectual prowess when really it's just it might be that grammar is not his strength mm. and I'm saying this not necessarily to say don't have the ick, but to say if you are having good conversation with him in general, it just might not translate for him in written words, right? So you need to limit your text to, you're right, yeah, I'll call you later. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's <laughs> it. That's it. <laughs> don't send me long ed essays via text or anything. No like, love just letters, none no of nothing, the FaceTime nothing, me, call nothing. me, Zoom me. Like I don't, we can't. We can't text. I don't want to yeah. see any written English from you. <laughs> don't write it, baby. Voice note me. Do you get what I mean? And and that's I think that's actually a really good way around it. Um, if like I said, you actually like him mm. like well enough, and everything else is up there, and yeah. it's just the grammar that's falling a bit that's... behind. But I thought this was a really interesting that's dilemma so... because it's so true. Sometimes you just get the ick, and it's like, go away. What's the biggest ick you've ever had? What is the biggest ick I have ever had? I cannot stand hearing people eat. I can't stand it. Why are you eating like oh. a pig from a trough? <laughs> Why are you eating like a pig from a trough? Chomp, chomp, what? chomp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know when they're eating with their mouth Christ open? Christ of Nazareth. You heal Billy. Jesus. <laughs> you heal Billy. Help your children. <laughs> I can't, st I can't stand it. I really can't stand it. You healed me. Um, how about you, Renee? Oh, there was a specific one that came up in my head. <laughs> Basically, you know when... <laughs> when a man stands up, all yeah. he bends over. And you see his bum bum. You see his ass crack. <laughs> when I see crack. When I see crack. No cap, I gotta go. <laughs> I can't get... Why am I seeing crack? Yeah yeah like when you bet it's just so like ew no boxer shorts just crack and if there's like hairs no <laughs> no if there's hairs no what 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 ass crack is bad like it's when really you when you and, and for us heavier people it's easy to show a bit of crack <laughs> it's easy especially for men that be wearing them tight ass trousers Bruh. and like jog um because the thing is the opposite if you're wearing like track suits and i see like a little bit of box i'm like oh this is yeah this is sexy if I see crack, if I see yeah. skin, if I see Why her. is your clothes so tight that I must not see your butt? So why are you wearing low you... rise? <laughs> <laughs> why are you wearing low rise? Uh, why don't they make high waist for men anyway? They don't really need to, <laughs> to just be me. sucking in <laughs> They need to put everything in them. <laughs> Them high waisted leggings. But you know what? I don't understand why they don't make high rise jeans for men because some of them have bellies, <laughs> <laughs> and it might be. But because the more the people who are more prone to, to no, ask crack reveal, men yeah, one hundred percent. But like the people that are more prone to ask crack reveal typically have bigger tummies. But if you had <laughs> high waist jeans. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you since that, if you had high waist jeans, <laughs> <Stop. laughs> if you had a high waist jean, we would all Look, avoid these. And you could tuck in. the belly, and you can 
the ass would never show. Oh, and another ick is when they grow their like pinky nail. Oh, that is horrible. Any <laughs> of the nails. <laughs> Why are your nails grown? Pinky nail. <laughs> big ick. And also their toes. Ew, oh, if your toes are unkempt, that's a big That's ick. horrible. That is horrible. I another big ick for me is men with their tight their clothes are too tight. <laughs> 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 If I see a button about to pop, if you don't go and put your cousin's shirt hey, down. You know them like, you know when you've been working out, them man them that have been working out, their muscles are actually popping. But they wear XXS. Oh, okay. Look, I know that this episode is not under X, but men that only eat junk food, I think that's so disgusting. Who I just treat acid for we. That's you just, no, it burns. You smell. <laughs> I don't like that. Men who don't like vegetables. I don't like anyone who doesn't. I think anyone who doesn't like vegetables is capable of nuclear warfare. <laughs> <laughs> You're capable of nuclear warfare. Because why are you this? Things that naturally come processed. from the earth. You why don't like so it. Processed? Ooh, I've weird. never seen you drink water in your whole life. I don't know. Oh, I know you smell deep, deep down. Can you imagine? To your Kissing core. Them. Your gut <gasps> is in a bit. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> your gut health. Kombucha ain't oh, out. That, that ain't. You, <laughs> that you need a colon cleanse you three times. <laughs> you just see the GP. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, Ew. that is, yeah, ick. Like, no, icks are funny, man. Yeah, man. Icks are very, very funny, but those are a few of ours. You know, there was one, heaven forgive me, but <laughs> heaven actually forgive me. That I saw a line that, well, that was like, basically, you know when you're on a date with a guy, mm. <laughs> he tries to call. Call the way he tries to call the way so he doesn't get them. But that comes like you guys can are happen. Evil. Exactly. That can happen. Not every like server is attentive nah. to just you. Some of the icks are so funny. No, that, some another of, one that I saw online that was like when men use umbrellas. No, but some of the icks though don't make sense. They just don't umbrella can't use an umbrella. As, no do you get what I mean? I don't want someone coming home to be smelling damp. Oh, Ew. I'm screaming. Ew. My one was when <laughs> men that run for the bus. <laughs> But how is he going to get some, A man who knows he has somewhere to go. Right. Bad breath. <laughs> oh, God, did they kill Christ, me? Christ, have mercy. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but having said that, like, bad cologne. Oh, I hear that. Bad cologne. I hear that. Or when cologne has mixed with the BO, you have to bath. <laughs> <laughs> you you must, have to bath. It's a necessity. The a perfume, the, the perfume doesn't mean you can avoid the bath. No, you have to bath. Mm-mm. Change Please. your socks too. Yeah, yeah. Oh Jesus! Wow. But apart from that, we love you. Yeah, we do. Anyways, we do. to today's episode, we go leveling up. What are some of the traps we must avoid? When going on this journey of glowing and growing, because it's not always pretty, go mm. and listen to some of our past mm-hmm. episodes. But there's also chances to be lured into something more dangerous, yeah. right? Especially as we're having more conversations about leveling up, glowing up, all of these things, especially as a lot of us transition into adulthood or, yeah. you know, are just trying to rebrand a little bit, become the women who we want to be it's not always going to be easy Mm. there will be some bumps in the road but there are some bumps that you can avoid so point number one hit us with it oh no (laughs) um hit us with the uh, it's uh. a language that you were (laughs) the first i think is giving up too early Mm. i think many of us are so driven by very very I think many of us are driven by very, very physical changes. Mm. Like we want to see things manifest quickly. Mm. So we give ourselves the 30 day challenges. We give ourselves the 60 day challenges and whatnot. And then when what we were hoping to happen by the end of that period doesn't happen, we think that it's time to give up. But it's funny because obviously, hi, we're Christians. And the most recent service that we went to, the message around when things are getting hard, that's when Mm. you need to press harder. Yeah. That's what a lot of women need to do. Yeah. When things are getting hard, when you get to the end of that six weeks and it feels like things are not moving, that's yeah. when you need to actually press hard. 100%. That's literally the precipice to your breakthrough. Mm. So yeah, have your like three, four week challenges. Yeah, have your like, you know, 60 day, whatever. Yeah. But that's literally just the beginning portion. Yeah, of that's the introduction. It's the intro. Yeah. Like um, when I think of like fitness journeys, the amount of questions I always get around, how long does it take to see progress? Mm. And I think really the question is, how long am I willing to stick with this? Mm. And how long 
do I need to wait to feel progress as opposed to seeing See it? it? Because sometimes we wait for, again, we're looking for the physical manifestation of our progress mm. when really it's about the internal state as well, right? Mm. So- we need to see that we have healed manifesting the fact that you know i'm able to pursue relationships or go out on dates you don't need to go out on a date to know that you're healed right we need to make sure that we fit into a size four um to see that we're making physical progress well actually you don't need to be a size four to be healthy right so sometimes we have really arbitrary markers of success that we tack onto the end of very very short periods of time Mm. and this is preventing us from leveling up because really we're just setting ourselves up for failure in the long term Mm. so having a long-term view to the leveling up process and seeing it as a continuous journey a journey of continuous improvement Mm. I cannot stress like there's so many sisters that got to the end of January and gave up Mm. there's so many people that got to the end of January and saw that nothing came alive in Mm. their journey they Mm. saw all they saw was just ah this is not working for me I've been on this thing for four weeks and nothing has changed yeah well sometimes and that's another important thing right you need to zoom out yeah because changes over time Mm. is more important than changes in the moment yeah yeah so yeah you didn't lose any weight or maybe you lost like two or three pounds well that's great because in the next six months you could lose 10 you could lose 15 you could lose 20 or vice versa gain maybe you've only gained like two pounds you can gain another two pounds in the next month these things are cumulative maybe you know you didn't make six figures in six weeks yeah boo (laughs) boo tomatoes (laughs) tomatoes i'm sticking it in think about some of the most successful people you know do you really think that they became obviously right overnight successes overnight successes obviously right social media gives you privy to people's success stories yeah but they rarely give you the nuance around their failures right everything is biased towards success so we're always going to see the tiktok viral superstars we're always going to see the youtubers that blew up overnight but we're never going to see the hour of content that they put in the hours of editing that Mm. goes into that one video that blew up we're never going to see the trials and tribulation when it came to saving up for their first camera like six or seven years ago those are things that you're not going to see but don't let that deter you because the leveling up journey again continuous process Mm. stop waiting for the short-term wins and yes use the short-term wins as a marker but don't use them as your complete like baseline yeah it's literally just a am i headed in the right direction yes there are 12 months in a year Mm. you didn't achieve all of your goals in the first month you have 11 more months to Mm. make it happen and even if you don't get it in this year there's the next year and the year after god willing the year after that yeah so really seeing this thing as a zoomed out process and really trying to be and really not losing heart mm. because it can be so disappointing. You know, when like you've got a goal, you're like, yeah, I'm going to smash it. I've yeah. got all of that energy. And that's like, that comes with the nature of January, right? Mm. Everyone's like, it's January. I'm going to smash my, my goals. January is cold. It's dark. It's too. dark. January is dark. Like it. Okay. After that second week, um, January is long. Like we're, not in, we're not in February. Yeah. Already? We're not in March. Why? We're not in, we're not in the summer. Yeah. And I think people also need to realize that that time will pass. Mm. So it's better that you're actually wow. working towards your goals in the time that will pass. Because mm. whether you, listen, time is not thinking about your goals. <laughs> time don't care about the you. The world will not stand still yeah. for you. Time waits for no So woman. even if you give up on your goals or give up on the things that you said you're going to set out to do, that time will pass. Yeah. And you will find yourself at the end of the year wondering, well, how come I haven't progressed? It's because you gave up too early. Yeah. Oh, come so on. really having the tenacity to persevere with your goals Mm. and persevere with your efforts as well Mm. because some of you are oh boy you're you're trying to actually like you've got a goal i wouldn't know by the way that you're engaging with yourself i wouldn't know by the the way that you carry yourself that you're a woman with a mission you say you have vision you don't look my god i need to see the vision in you before the vision manifests oh it's not going to be it's not going to be you know, the body, it's going to be the way you carry yourself. Yeah. It's not going to be the money. It's going to be the way you carry yourself. Do you carry yourself with the vim of somebody that's achieved those goals or is on their way to achieving those goals? Mm. You look like you gave up. You sound like it too. Defeated. Boo, tomato. Dust yourself up. Sis, are you okay? Get up. Are you alive? And get going. Because she really just... Get up. Like, double, and I know as women, Jesus. listen, obviously we have, you know compassion yeah and 100%. emotional intelligence and all that kind of stuff yeah. and i know you've been through a lot it's been oh, enough really you know yeah i know you've been through a lot 
but that is not an excuse to give up. Mm-hmm. It's never an excuse to give at up. At all. Get up. Life don't wants give to up. Tussle. Get up. Get That's up. Right. Oh, don't, words. don't give up. Get up. Now. <laughs> That's how I won that public speaking. You know what I'm saying, girl? So I won that. They just be coming to me. But... No, I'm trolling. I'm trolling. No, I love that. Don't give up. Get, get up. 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 No. Get up. Oh, what a word. Take your time. Oh, rest a bit. Because you know when you fall over? You know when you buckle? Oh, no, you have hey. to just reevaluate everything. Um, bro, you know there was Composure. one time I was in like year 10, right? And mm. it was snowy. It was oh. this time of year, in fact. It was snowy. And I was running for the bus mm-hmm. to go to our secondary school. <laughs> the snow. When I say I fell and slid, and there was a bus right there, all the... You know, there's like that, those cute boys that get on the bus and oh, stuff like yeah. that. All of them were there. I fell, I slid, and I stayed in that. <gasps> 100%. Until, that bus, until that bus passed, and I said, I'll get up again. 100%. You have to pause. You have to pause, but you got to get up. It's true. Up. It's true. Your ass going to freeze. Yep. <laughs> How about that? And your blazer's going to be wet. Exactly. And you ain't going to get It's going to be harder to get up then. There we go. There you go. That is such a good point. You know what came to mind when you were talking is you don't plant a seed the same day you eat the fruits. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You don't eat the fruits of a seed mm-hmm. the same day you planted it. It's important for you to give yourself time to see those fruits grow and also to nurture those fruits as they grow so that they can grow well, yeah. right? A lot of us want to eat the fruits the same day we planted it. And because we then don't, because we're frustrated at the fact we can't eat the fruits the day we planted it, we just don't plant the seed. Yeah. Then you're there six six months later, hungry. Time doesn't wait for you. The the earth run by seasons. Mm. Summer is going to come. Winter is, I mean, climate change. But these fingers crossed. Are, <laughs> fingers crossed. But these things are going to change, right? There's going to be a time to plant. There's going to be a time to harvest. Mm. The issue isn't whether the season will come. The issue is, are you ready for the season to come? Oh, honey. Because a lot of us think, oh my God, when is my time to win going to come? It's going to come. Are you preparing for it? Because when the spotlight is shone on you, are you going to have anything to show? Precisely. And you might not. And then you'll be here thinking, it's not my season to win. No, this is your prime season to win. You just didn't plant nothing. You just didn't didn't plant anything. And you've got to be wise about that. You've got to be protective about that as well. Mm. And really like, know for yourself right now in my life, is it time to eat or is it time to sow? Yeah. Decide and then do that work. Do you get what I mean? Mm. And celebrate your victories when your victories happen. When it's time to eat, feast. Go at it. Enjoy. Okay? Enjoy. Celebrate. Because just know there's another season coming called famine and empty uh, and more work. And that's, you know what? That's even brought up a great point mm. around the fact that many of us are preparing for our winning season when really we need to prepare for the win, winning and the famine. The, you better talk that Because talk. once the harvest you better is done. Talk it. Hey, Come once on. the harvest is done. Come on. It's easy to prepare to win. Now we started it up. When you lose. Are you prepared for when you lose? When there is economic crash. If you lost your job tomorrow. Literally. After you got your, ah, you've got a great job, but you yeah. lost it. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Are you prepared? There is not, like we have to, we have to embrace the fact that life is not constant highs. Yeah. There are lows. And whilst the lows help us appreciate the highs, we actually have to also learn to embrace the lows, right? The lows are a great time to put your head down and just focus. Mm. But you have to be mindful of the lows in the time of the high so that the low doesn't come and catch you off guard. And we're not saying this to wish bad upon you. It is a principle of life. You sow, you reap. You can't eat what you've sown or you're not going to reap, okay? Mm. So there has to be a time of self-denial. There has to be a time of discipline and sacrifice. There has to be a time, even within your winning season, where you are laying up things for your losing season, Mm. okay? You don't feel the true pain of a losing season if you acted right in a winning season. Mm, If If you've trained yourself properly, yeah? If you have saved what you needed to save if you stuck to your budget when even when the money was coming in and you could have overspent right even when you were slimmer and you could have eaten more okay when your metabolism gets slower when you're older you're gonna be thankful that you didn't adopt very bad habits when you could have do you get what i mean like 
in the seasons when things were going good, did I store up enough to help the me of the future who's in a situation where it's going bad, right? The person right now, you may be thinking, why do I need to learn to wake up early? The mother in you is going to be thankful that you learned that whilst you were single. Mate. Okay. Why do I need to learn how to, you know, manage hundreds of thousands? I'm only making hundreds. Okay. The you that's making the millions is going to be thankful that you had that knowledge already so that you didn't get overwhelmed when the millions came. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even when things seem to be, whether it's a winning or a losing season, prepare yourself. Because a lot of us have hope when we're in a losing season because we know a winning season or we have hope and a desire for a winning season to come. Yeah. The person that's in the winning season also needs to have enough wisdom to know a losing season is going to come. Boy. Okay. So keep, and this not to dampen your joy, but keep your mind sober that you will not be fooled and that you do not like, and you don't want the losing season to be your conclusion. Can you imagine? Because losing seasons can kill. Dusty. Can kill. Dead. So set yourself up for that losing season in your winning season. Mm. That's such a good point. That's great. Yeah. Wow, I feel like I've already given a point, but I have a point. <laughs> point number two over to Courtney. Point number two. On the left-hand uh, corner. Your level-up journey is not meant to be done alone. Stop avoiding accountability and community. Please, okay? I know you think everyone is toxic and they're coming to snatch your joy and everyone is telling you to burn bridges. No. Beloved rest. No. Beloved And rest. also, I know in your glow-up and and in your glow up and level up journey, it's easy to rely on your own knowledge. Yeah. However, you have amazing resources at your disposal called your network, mm. the people who you actually know. And I know not all of us have the right people in our network. However, it's important to not just rely on parasocial relationships and a social network mm. digitally to give you the information that you need and the help that you need. Because a lot of times the people who we interact with on the internet they don't see the best and the worst of us you need people who can call you out on the worst of you okay if you don't give people around you the permission to do that you're going to find yourself glowing up but having really bad character glowing up and leveling up without the ability to sustain what you have achieved because no one was able to correct you when you did something wrong no one no one pulled you up on your ish. Why? Because you never welcomed it. And that doesn't that doesn't mean having community or accountability around you who are constantly criticizing you. Mm -hmm. But actually people who will correct you with you, your best interest in mind. Yeah. So people who can do it in love, people who can do it in a way that you will understand and people who are also committed to helping you through those difficult journeys. Some of you don't have enough friends who can tell you what you just said was rude what you just did was out of pocket and you and it's not that you don't have friends that will tell you they would tell you but they know you'll react poorly mm. you need to invite accountability into your life by telling people who you trust heavy on the trust yeah yep, yep. inviting people who you trust to know these are my goals this is where i'm trying to get to but you see parts of me that i don't see myself you need to humble yourself and realize you're not the only one who knows you there are a lot of people who know you yep. and they know you maybe better than you know yourself they right. see your weak points they see your blind spots right and you need to give those people access mm. to tell you for where you're trying to go this ain't how you go at yep. you yep. know yep. and if you don't have that and you just go on this level up journey thinking i can do bad all by myself you're going to end up leveled up and alone leveled up and hollow. Not hollow lacking depths lagging lacking true grit not an okay easter egg. but a hundred uh, proper easter egg i can't believe easter eggs are not solid can you imagine anyway mm -hmm. but yeah like you have this is not a journey that you go on on your own you need a friend you need mm. a sister you need parents you need wh whoever can be in your life to tell you sis babes love ya but 
I need trash. to get you, I, I need you to get back on course. Yeah. Especially yeah. because your viewpoint when mm-hmm. you are on the journey is pretty much just the immediate steps in front of you, right? But there are people who can see you and look from the outside and be like, don't step there. Don't do that. In the bigger picture, this mm-hmm. doesn't make mm-hmm. sense. I know you're in your feelings and you're in the moment, but I'm seeing the bigger picture. Mm this doesn't make sense. Okay. And you need people who you can converse with. And it's not that they're going to dictate to you who you should be, but they can call you out on when you're being the person you shouldn't be. Mm. Yeah, It can never be understated the importance of having people around you yeah. because we have gotten so used to these narratives of I'm going to be alone. I'm going to yeah. do this. I'm going to sojourn alone. I'm going to, I'm born alone, die alone. die alone. And it's just so unhealthy and it's actually extremely inefficient because mm. who better to see you than the people outside of you? Facts. I think sometimes we can be too confident in our capacity to see ourselves for who we really are. Yeah. And who we really are is manifested in the way that we interact with people anyway. Right. So utilize the people you have around you to gain better information and understanding about yourself. Mm. Cause self-awareness isn't, listen, to gain self-awareness, people rely on the self. Mm. And that's a problem. Ooh. You actually have to rely on others for self-awareness. I'm so, so, I'm socially aware. I'm self-aware. I know exactly who I am. No, you don't. No, you really don't. Because you have a bad attitude. <laughs> or you're not a woman of your word. Or there's just multiple things about yourself yeah. that if you're not careful to ask people for feedback on mm. and accountability for, you can fall into this self echo chamber, yes. believing that you are self aware. When yes. really, you got your blinders on, sis. 100%. And you, the reason why that happens is you are the biggest creator of excuses in your life. A hundred percent. I have a bad attitude, but it's because of this, this and this. And then you excuse your bad behavior Mm. and you also feel like you have a right to behave badly, right? No one is taking away from your past experiences. However, you have to, it gets to a point in your level up journey where you have to look in the mirror and say, babes, this is unacceptable. Yeah. I know you've got your reasons. I know you've got your past. I know those things happen to you for real, for real when are we going to move on, right? Moving on isn't quick. Moving on surely is not easy, but that's why we be out here on this podcast talking about go to therapy, get community around Mm. you, have realistic expectations about the fact that this is going to take a long time. We're not telling you to heal quickly. We're just telling you to heal. We're not telling you to heal prettily. We're just telling you heal. We're not telling you to heal for anybody else. We're telling you to heal for you. Mm. Just Mm -hmm. heal, Mm -hmm. full stop. No one's putting a time limit on it, but make sure that at least you're heading in that direction right yeah if not self-aware people are able to tell themselves no i'm happy being toxic i like it here at least let that be your truth but do not deceive yourselves and do not deceive other people by your mouth saying i want to level up and i want to heal and i want to get better Mm. but your heart saying i'm so determined to stay the same your behavior says i am determined to stay the same every sign you're showing is i am determined to stay the same the only people who can really see that Mm. because we are the believer of our biggest lies right we are 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 the biggest believers of our lies we say we want to lose weight we say and we create the images in our head we want to level up in our finances but our feet aren't walking in the direction of what we've said right looking crazy the only person who can really call you up on that is the people who see you because Mm. they don't just see your desire they don't care about your desire they want to see the manifestation Mm. because they live with the manifestation the people around you live with the manifestation of your bitterness more than you do oh boy when you're alone by yourself you don't manifest bad things that much do you get what i mean like you you le- you you listen to these uh, like people like us who are helping you weekly, hey. and you know you you challenge yourself, talk, yeah. you kind yeah, of yeah. Ha- learn how to regulate yourself. You you've done the work with your therapist, but oftentimes it's the people around us who can bring out the worst in us. If we're going to be honest, but they're also the people who feel the worst of us, right? That's why you have to go to them and be like, "Am I acting the way that?" I say I I want to get some accountability and some community around you because you really can't do this by yourself. You must. Yeah. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that this leveling up journey will be easy. Mm. Comfort is the biggest killer of growth. Mm. The moment you become too comfortable, you stagnate, you plateau, thinking 
Look, when we open our phones or open our laptops, we're always bombarded with, look at what I've achieved. Yeah. And the problem with these narratives is it shows you the end product of a very, very hard and grueling mm. process. So when you see the bikini beach bodies, don't be thinking that you can do this in two weeks because yeah. the process to get a bikini body is hard hard yeah it's really really hard or when we see you know the tesla and yeah this is people some people are exempt right then people that have like you know mommy and daddy's money and all of that kind of stuff even the folks who have not been privileged in the same way as Mm. those other folks sometimes we can show these end products without acknowledging the process and Mm. acknowledging the process without this rose tinted glass of success Mm. because when you're in the process sometimes it doesn't feel like there's going to be an end point. Yeah. Sometimes you're so far from your destination. It feels like I'm just tarrying and I'm continuing going for no reason. Right. It's only until you're approaching the win or you have the win that everything makes sense in hindsight. Yeah. So don't lose faith because things are, you know, getting difficult and whatnot. Yeah. But more importantly, this thing is actually not going to be easy. At and all. your acknowledgement of the fact that this process will be difficult will help you in your leveling mm. up journey because you can prepare. Love that. Whatever it is you want to do, whether it be the six, listen, it can be even like smaller goals, right? It can be, you know, I want to travel to this place, you know, in six months or mm. so. Even that is not going to be easy because it means you're going to have to deny yourself certain comforts to save up for that trip. Mm understanding that these things that this leveling up journey requires sacrifice yeah is the biggest way that you can achieve your goals yeah. understand it like internalize it yeah this thing won't be easy but you are capable of achieving yeah it. and like one of my favorite favorite quotes was by um john f kennedy we do these things not because they are easy we do them because they're hard a lot of the goals that you set yourselves you do them and you want to achieve them because they're not easy. Yeah. They appear easy, but they're difficult. Yeah. Like they're hard to come by. 100%. These are things that, you know, reflect your character. These are things that make you feel um, a sense of achievement. Mm. These are things that are markers of your success. Mm. Hard work precedes success. There mm. is no running away from it. Like you yes. can have your viral moment. You can have your capital and whatnot. Yeah. You can have varying um, levels of privilege, yeah. but the equation always remains the, the same. same. There may be different quantities, but the equation remains the same. It's that. always going to be hard work plus opportunity yeah. plus privilege. Yeah, It's just a, it's a balancing act yes. now. So if you have less opportunities or if you have less privileges, then the hard work. Bump it up. Bump we it need up. to bump it up and having said that there also does need to be a balance because acknowledging that you have to work hard doesn't mean that you can you know work yourself to the bone and Mm. die in the place of hard work Mm -hmm. because sometimes we can think oh i've got a hard work like i've got to work Work hard hard. so hard to the point where i'm tired i'm burnt out there's a balance to this yeah and i think as women we can be very all or nothing 100 percent Like I'm either putting my all in this or I'm doing absolutely nothing towards this. And when we put our all into this or like we put our all into a particular goal, when we become the goal, when everything um, around us is just about, you know, these random arbitrary targets that we've Mm. given ourselves, we run the risk of disqualifying ourselves from the real race before the race has even Even begun begun. because we don't have the energy. Tired. So acknowledging hard work doesn't necessarily mean that hard work needs to become you is Ooh. the point that I'm really trying to to hit home because case in point, I'm a hard worker. Yes, she is. Courtney is also a hard worker. Yes, I am. We work hard for the things that we care about. 100%. But we've definitely gone through several experiences and several seasons in our life where we've allowed the hard work to get to us. 100%. Oh, we have, have been have burnt out. We have felt the repercussions. Yeah, I felt the repercussions. repercussions. The physical repercussions, the yeah. emotional repercussions. Yeah. And through that, we've been able to self-regulate and understand when we're hitting that point where it's like, you cannot Mm -hmm. work past this. This is my boundary. I've worked hard. Yeah. I've worked sufficiently to get to my goal. Yeah. I've been effective. I've been trying to work as smart as possible, but I've hit my limit. hundred percent. It's time to put the thing down and go home. hundred percent. And even if I haven't hit the goal, I won't violate the boundary. Because I know what is on the other side and it will take me long to get Are your goals worth disrespecting your Your boundaries? Your own boundaries. Your own boundaries. And there was a post that we put out recently um, around boundaries and boundaries being the way that you show self-respect. The way that you show your body, your mind, your soul that you respect yourself. Are you willing to disrespect yourself to achieve your goals? Just a goal. There's a fine line. 
Are you willing to disrespect yourself? I love that. Just to achieve your goals. 100%. So acknowledge that this leveling up journey is difficult. Yeah. It will require resources. Yeah. It will require hard work. Yeah. But it will also require you to understand and acknowledge your boundaries mm. and work hard to a place and to a point that you feel comfortable yes. with. Yes. In fact, forget comfort. We don't want you to feel comfortable, but we want you to feel comfortable with hard work. Yeah. We want you to feel comfortable with knowing and you know working hard up until your boundaries are pushed yeah and there will be certain moments where it's actually necessary for you to push what you think are your boundaries but they're actually your limitations mm. so case in point when i think of like gym for example yeah. when you're thinking of like you know maxing out your reps or going for a run for you to progress the the concept is progressive overload for you to progress you have, you to. have to push through yeah. what you put as a boundary yeah. which you incorrectly put as a boundary which is actually something that limits you it's a yeah. limitation 100%. so even in that right that's a point in of itself recognizing the difference between a boundary and, and a limitation limit. There will be certain parts of your leveling up journey that will require you to work hard to push past certain limitations yeah. that you have, yeah. whether it's physical, whether it's emotion. When we think of like our healing journey, yes. right, there's certain things that we say, oh, I don't want to talk about that. Your healing requires you to. Yeah. Your healing requires you to push past that limitation that you've, that thing you've locked up deep inside you, that that um, experience that you felt uncomfortable to talk about, that yeah. experience that you, that really like, bound you and kept you in the dark for a really long time mm. you've got to push past that limitation mm. if but the difference between a boundary and a limitation a limitation is something that keeps you in a place of comfort yeah it's a it's something that keeps you from progressing yeah. and it keeps you in a liminal space where there's no real progression mm. boundaries are more about understanding what it's more about understanding and energy management mm. are you respecting yourself and your energy management yeah and that's different to a limitation. A limitation is you actually have the energy to push past yeah, these things. But you Whereas a boundary, you refuse to go. Whereas a boundary is a, that's that's the end of the line yeah. dog. That's actually the end of the line dog. And the th the funny thing is limitations prevent you from progressing, but yeah. boundaries help you to progress. progress literally, which is funny. Was, in my head, I was thinking, so Crazy things, yeah, but when you get past the limitation, it will bring you part closer to your goal. But if you go past the boundary, it will bring you further away precisely yeah so understand listen this journey is hard yeah it's tough i will be the first to say the things that i love in my life the things that i've achieved they've been hard they did not come easy i will never lie and say that oh i found this easy obviously there's certain things in your journey that will be easy yeah and 100%. that's great and enjoy that yeah but most things in life Are that you're going working to be towards, hard they will be difficult i love that they will be hard yeah and rather than, I know we, we're proponents of soft lifestyle. Listen, me soft and life. Me, we're defo soft lifestyle merchants. We are bought into the dream. We're bought in. Yes. Hashtag soft lifestyle. But understand that unfortunately some things in life are, are hard. hard. They're hard. <laughs> it's They're, facts, hard. It's facts, it's facts. They're hard. You will have to get out of your lounge yeah. wear eventually and it's put facts. on your battle gear. Yeah. Because things are hard. Yeah. They're difficult. Look Ooh. outside. Look around you. Yeah. Every single day, there are some people that wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning to, or even earlier to go to a 20 something plus hour shift. Yeah. There are some people that don't even get sleep. Yeah. There are some people that are, you know, and to be honest, I, like we've seen it with our parents. They oh, had to work hard to get girl. to where they wanted to go. They had to work hard. Yeah. You yeah. can't escape it. Yeah. So... As much as you want to buy your pink journals, as much as you want to, you know, decorate your room, as mm. much as you want to do all of these like pretty cute, soft lifestyle yeah. stuff, make sure you pair it with what needs to be done. I and love that's hard that. Oh, come on. And but I've rambled on. No, no, you haven't. That was a perfect point. I think we need to, like you said last week, we need to kill that I've rambled. Yeah. This oh, is yeah. our podcast. Yeah. Yeah. This, um, <laughs> this is where we ramble. This, <laughs> this is where it happens. Miss Courtney has never told a lie <laughs> to me. She's always been straight up. You right. There you go. I'm just bouncing off you. Mm -hmm. I love that. And the thing is, everyone's heart is going to look different. Mm. And I think this is why, like, under sis, I need you to understand and appreciate the concept and the principle of rest. Mm. It becomes easier to work hard if you know you will get rest. Yep. Okay. If you don't prioritize rest, hard work always sounds scary yep. because you're always working hard from a place of being tired, from a place of being scared, mm. from a place of feeling like you are insufficient. But when you 
understand and you prioritize rest, hard work comes from a place of aspiration. It comes from a place of even encouragement towards yourself Mm. and a place of self-discovery rather than it is a punishment. Do you get what I mean? If you don't prioritize rest in your life and have designated and protected times of rest, hard work is always going to feel like a punishment always you're always going to feel like you're running behind you're always going to feel like this is excessively painful Mm. but if you go into hard work knowing at the end of this I am going to have a time of rest and I will have that time of rest the hard work just becomes something to get through and you enjoy getting through it because you know again it's just a short season whether it's just a couple hours of your day I'm always so encouraged by the fact that my workout is gonna end yeah oh I'm just gonna (laughs) do it because it's going to come to an end, yep, okay? Yep. And I'm going to have that full night's sleep. I'm going to go and have that great shower after. I'm going to moisturize my whole body. Like, I'm going to give myself that protected time of self-care, mm. that protected and, and instilled routine, which caters around my well-being, right? Yeah. It's, it's actually, you need to start creating routines which center your well-being, your actual care health and love for yourself and stick to those routine i love what you were talking about in terms of boundaries being the way you show yourself you respect yourself the way you disrespect yourself is to tell yourself you don't need to be loved you don't need to be cared for you don't need to take things slow you don't need to be soft towards yourself and you Mm. keep pushing yourself and pushing yourself to this point of hardship that is not hard work hard work is not hardship hardship is very different hardship is very hardship is bondage hard work is effort and you need to put effort into things but you don't need to be in bondage to things Mm. don't be in bondage to your own work ethic put effort towards your work but effort itself even has a boundary if it will remain effective Mm. okay Mm -hmm. you can keep giving effort and effort but i at a point you're not even going to be effective you've been up looking at that computer screen working on that presentation for the last 19 hours (laughs) your brain is it's tapped out so even if you say i'm going to commit another two hours to it you're not effective Mm. just because you're putting in more effort do you get what i mean Effort requires rest in order to remain effective. (sighs) So prioritize your rest, please. Prioritize two, three hours a day where you're just going to, or whatever that looks like for you, whatever um, fits into your life situation right now, where you're going to become one with your mind, pour out your feelings, talk to somebody, eat, eat nutritious food, sleep. Your body needs it. Stop trying to uh, shortcut the principles of the human body. Your body needs rest. It needs food for fuel. It needs community and people because you cannot do life alone. Lean into those things, optimize those things, prioritize those things. Because if you die, the goals, what? The goals don't mean nothing. They out. If you're gone, what's a goal to a dead man? Ah, that's good. Do you know what I mean? You need to prioritize staying alive. (laughs) Please. Please, You gotta live. You gotta live. We need you alive. We need you you alive. And I know everything's trying to kill you, but you won't die. Ah, hallelujah. You won't die. Okay? Hallelujah. Please do not make your level up journey purely aesthetics focused. Please, I beg you in the name of God. Oh, okay. Because you will be deceiving yourself to think it is hard to get things. Mm. It is not hard to get things. Mm. To get things, there are so many different ways. We talk about criminality here on this podcast. Yeah, criminal minds, baby. There are different ways, 100%. There are different ways. There are fraudulent ways. There are lying ways, deceptive ways to get the things that you want. If the journey was about the things... Mm you don't have to become the person that you need to be, okay? Mm, mm, mm. This journey is not about the things. It's not about the the nice bag and stuff like that. Get it programmed into your mind that getting things is easy when you've become the person that you need to be, right? You know how people talk about like the law of attraction? It's true, right? But you have to become the person. 
If your focus is so much on the things and you avoid becoming the person, things aren't going to be attracted to you. You're going to have to snatch them. Mm -hmm. Snatching is hard work. We don't snatch. Snatching breaks your nails. We don't snatch. What we want to do is let the things we want come to us, okay? And that doesn't mean you don't have to go and grab some things from time to time. However, even to grab, you have to be in proximity. How can you be in proximity if you're not in purpose? You need to get in in line okay stop running away from the ideas that you have okay because the life you want is on the other idea is on the other side of the ideas that you have Mm. stop throwing away every business idea that you've ever had and just saying it couldn't be me i don't know how to do it well start getting to know (laughs) (laughs) it's about time it's about time it's about time to know okay because we're here praying for these things i want the bag i want the car i want the house Mm. how do you think these how do you think these things come that's you crazy if you don't have the money to buy the things that you want you have to Find a way to make the money. Okay, but you keep discarding every idea, every talent, and you're not justifying them by sharpening your talents, learning more about your craft. One thing that I love about Renee is, Renee's going to learn to do something well. (laughs) It starts off with, I like to do this, but then you progress to a point where I'm going to learn to do this well, wherever it be cooking, workout, stuff like that. Like you don't just go to the gym, you learn about nutrition. You don't just work out, you learn about the muscles. Like you know stuff, do you get what I mean? But it's because you push yourself to a point of excellence, right? And becoming good at what you do, writing. I've seen you write for years and years and years. You've developed your craft and that's why you're eating of the fruits, right? That's why you're now getting to a point where you're getting paid for the things that you spent hours in the night studying, Mm. right? But if you don't devote those hours to studying, who's going to pay you for passion? Go and listen to our passion versus pay episode where we were talking about (laughs) passion Passion versus versus pay. pay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But we, we established something really powerful in that, which is passion is not enough, Mm. right? Desire is not enough. Okay. Just because you desire these things. Okay. If you don't get committed to the idea of doing the work and the purpose behind it and being committed to your goals and the discipline and the, the fact that you have to steward your ideas well, and that you have to teach yourself new skills and become good at them. Not just, not just proficient. Mm. You need to become expert. Okay, in the things that you are saying you want, okay, and the things that you're saying you want to build. If you don't become comfortable with that, you're going to give up on the process because the things aren't coming. The things will respond to the person that you are becoming. But if you start chasing the things harder than you are committed to becoming a an excellent person at what you do, Mm. the expert in your field, great at your job so that you can receive those promotions. If you don't become committed to that, you're just gonna give up and go and get the things in another way because the thing can be achieved in so many ways and so don't attach your level up journey and your marker of whether your level up journey is going well to the bags the house the the bags and the house come to those who are in need of it yes that is good and if you're not on the way to if you're not becoming the person who is business savvy who is doing their best to work at their business why do we need a nice apartment if we ain't gonna make the content why are we here asking God for a bigger office if we're not even committed to the business? There's no point. There's literally At no all. Point. You're wasting the resources of the earth and okay. they will go to other people. I was literally about to say, like, if you're, if you're not making use of the resources, somebody else will come along 100%. and they'll do better. And they will do it better. Do you get what I mean? The thing is, you ain't the first person to have the idea that you have. <sighs> Someone else has had it. Are you going to be the person who actually makes it happen though? Yeah. Because if you don't make it happen, it's going to go to somebody else. A lot of us think our ideas are new, right? Or actually, even let me flip it on this side. A lot of you have had ideas. You've held on to them for two, three, 10 years. You didn't do anything with it in the name of self-doubt, imposter syndrome, all of these things. I don't, lack of discipline. You're going to see it somewhere. Have you ever watched an advert and thought, I thought of that? Or you've seen us, I thought of that. You know, I thought of that invention. Someone starts a business and raises, you know, 5 million in funding. I had that idea, but you did nothing with it. There we go. The things that the earth needs are going to be birthed. The question is, do you want to be the one who carries it? If you say no to carrying it, don't ask for, don't, don't Don't ask ask for for the things. Do you get what I mean? 
For example, when you are pregnant, right, you're going to get the stroller. You're going to maybe get the bigger house Mm. because you're pregnant with something. You're going to make room for it and room is going to be made for you. But if you're not pregnant, don't ask for more room. Mind your business and keep it moving. Keep it moving. Why do you need more room? Some of us need to start putting demands on God, demands on the earth, demands Mm. on the people around us Mm. by showing them I'm carrying something. I've worked and I've nurtured this craft. I've worked and I've nurtured this gift and this idea is growing. It's doing well. I'm putting my hands to it. Now you need to make more room for me because it's even I'm getting coming. too big for my hands. It, I'm coming. I am but scared. you're talking about I'm coming. You ain't made a step. You ain't done nothing. You ain't even gone outside. Girl. Do you get what I mean? Stop. The world will respond to you by giving you more things if you've shown that you can be faithful with the things you already have. Okay. Wonderful. That's when you'll start to see the increase. Mm. Increase will come to you, sis, but yeah. you have to be diligent with it. Okay. The principle, I feel like this world is not wasteful. Yeah. If we look at nature, if we look at the fact that the rain pours into the sea, the sea evaporates the water and it goes back into the clouds, right? It's cycle. Cool. It's a whole cycle and it's a self-sustaining cycle. The world is not wasteful. The earth is not wasteful, mm. right? Mm. So if you are trying to force the earth to, if you're trying to create a life for yourself on this earth, you have to abide by its principles. If the earth is already showing you, we are not wasteful with our resources, right? That's the good. breath that we breathe in, the trees are breathing it out, Bruh. right? This world is proving to all of us we run on sustainability, mm. right? We run on what you give, you get, and then you give, right? If you're not giving, getting, and giving, why is the earth going to respond to you? You, you are wasteful. You ain't giving us nothing. You are wasteful. You given anything. Do you get what I mean? So prove to, prove to the earth you're not wasteful. Prove to the universe you're not wasteful. Mm. Prove to God I'm not wasteful. Mm. Give me more. Wow, that's so good. Yeah, and the more will come in the form of the things you actually want. Yeah, and even greater. Even greater. Even greater than you could have expected, which is always beautiful. Facts, facts. But yeah, that's my point. What a conversation. What a conversation. That was robust. Yeah. Robust. Robust. But yeah, sis, we just wanted to give you a little something to ginger your Monday morning so let us know in the comments down below here on youtube okay let us know your thoughts on this episode let us know what you want to see from us and actually you lay out in the comments this traps that you are avoiding and the sisters should avoid whilst going on their leveling up journey if you are new around here please hit that subscribe button turn on your notifications we upload once a week there's always a new episode okay we're always here we're always here and if you are listening to us on apple spotify google Podcasts, all of those things follow us all right rate us that five to four star four to five stars all right and definitely follow us on instagram at to my sisterhood to meet more of the other sisters so you're not just listening to us alone there's more of you out there okay don't forget to follow us on twitter and of course if you haven't already mailing list yeah we know there's some new listen the way that the sisterhood is growing right now we know there's some new faces around the block (laughs) hey sis what's good if you're listening to this for the first time the second time the third time hey what's good welcome to the sisterhood yeah and for all of the legacy sisters we see you yes, don't worry we, do. we know that some of you guys have been rocking with us since episode season one episode, episode one. one and we love and cherish you thank yeah. you so much for your support but don't forget to share this episode with another sister that is going on her leveling up journey let's all level up together as per always we're always so sad to say goodbye <laughs> <laughs> teardrops but <laughs> as we enter well rather as we are in february we wish you a fantastic month and we'll be back again sooner than you know it 100%. soon honey don't worry don't be dying this week we just, just, <laughs> we'll, we'll be back we'll be back we'll be back sisters it's been a pleasure it's been an honor and of course keep glowing and growing <laughs> <laughs>